Back to tonight now and an unbelievably good lineup on the Frank Skinner Show. Just a boy in school, I always loved to play the fool. They said it was a childish game, but now I've grown, I'm just the same. That's why when I'm walking out, people always stop and shout. Front time Frankie, 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 I'm feeling fine in a frivolous frame of mind. If anyone is, has got a partner and they haven't decided on a Christmas present yet, right, there's a fabulous thing I saw in the papers this week. A clinic in London is offering plastic surgery gift vouchers. <laughs> right? <laughs> Honestly. You'd better be really sure. <laughs> Better be sure, I'm telling you. What an interesting Christmas day that could be. <laughs> if you've slightly misjudged it. <laughs> now, it, it can be a really bad thing, though, if you buy the wrong present on Christmas Day. I remember I was going out with a woman once, and I can still see the look on her face, right, as she slowly opened the box I'd bought her and took out this odor eater's cat suit. <laughs> was practical and stylish. <laughs> Didn't like it. A mate of mine, and this is a completely true, his girlfriend bought him a Prince Albert. You know these, um... <laughs> <laughs> Remember him? <laughs> <laughs> a, Prince, a Prince Albert, it's like, um, it's like a silver ring and uh, it goes through the end of... You know, have you, you've heard of them? Right through. He wasn't pierced or anything. She just bought him the Prince Albert. He had to go and do all that. <laughs> and he wasn't happy. And I thought, it actually is not a bad idea, a Prince Albert. I, I might get one. <laughs> because I like the idea of being on my holidays, on a lilo, you know, out in the ocean. And I could, I could hitch it to a small anchor. <laughs> turned, you'd get an all-over tan, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Kelly Brook opened in an... Well, she didn't, actually. But I went, I went to see it just in case she did. She opened... Uh, <laughs> she opened in, in a new play this week. And I went along. It was at the Riverside Studios. And she was good, I thought. I spent a bit extra. I got myself at an individual booth. <laughs> Less embarrassing in, in many ways. <laughs> and the play, it's about um, lap dancing clubs, right? Now, is there any bloke here who's ever been to a lap dancing club? I say, I mean, there might be women, but any...? <laughs> that must be a million to one shot, haven't it? <laughs> I went once, right? I was, I was in America and I went, and I didn't like it. I didn't. <laughs> They kind of dance, they, get, they take the clothes off, these women, and they dance with their bum, like, about eight inches from your face. <laughs> and people are looking and that, you know. And I know it sounds all right, but I didn't know what facial expression <laughs> I was supposed to have. <laughs> so she was there, and I started, I started peering. I couldn't, I couldn't help it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was... <laughs> That, that didn't go well at all. <laughs> I didn't like that. And then after a bit, I took on a sort of lack of enthusiasm. I was sort of sitting like this. <laughs> <laughs> that caused offence, so it's tricky. <laughs> I'll tell you a strange thing that happened this week. Um, Express Newspapers Group is a very famous uh, newspaper thing, right? In the old days, it was run by um, Lord Beaverbrook, and it was a big time, massive organisation, and he was a very, very powerful man. This week, Express Newspapers was taken over by a bloke called Richard Desmond. 
Now, Richard Desmond, right, before he took over the Express Newspapers Group, um, is also the editor of um, Asian Babes, Naked Readers' Wives <laughs> and Big Ones. <laughs> <laughs> so it's caused a bit of a stir in him taking over. And uh, he says from now on he wishes to be known as Lord Beaverbook. <laughs> I love that joke. I know you didn't like it that much, <laughs> but it's in anyway. <laughs> uh, you know, some people called it the wedding of the year. It was a beautiful ceremony, would not it, Michael? Uh, <laughs> but you know that bit about you forsaking all others and not messing about with other women and that? <laughs> yes, dear. <laughs> well done, Ken. He was very hot in that rabbit suit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll tell you something, though. I know what was the wedding of the year last year. Hayley Ann Patterson, will you take Royston Cropper to be your husband? Will you love him, comfort him, honour and protect him, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live. I will. Aww. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Julie Henry, I can't say it. No, no, stop! Stop! Yeah. 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 Like a runaway train. <laughs> so it was my fault. I got. I couldn't say the name, lads. <laughs> I say. I, I couldn't say the name. Oh right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Julie Hesmondalsh. I love that song. It's great. Oh, well, I can listen to it all night. In fact, I have virtually. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, hello, Julie. Now, it's a big, it's a big week, isn't it, for Coronation Street? Is it on seven times this week? Yeah. Uh, yeah, six or seven times this week, and then it's the sort of lead up to the 40th and the live episode. Oh, yeah. So, how long have you there. been in it now? Nearly three years. Wow, we. I know. I still feel like a new girl, though, really. It's really weird. I yeah. can't feel like I've been there that long. We're well, all a relatively new girl. Well, I am compared to. <laughs> 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 You see, the character that Julie plays <laughs> is a transsexual. <laughs> Don't mind me bringing that up. No, I no, I didn't expect you to, but... <laughs> no. Well, there's, there's no... We, we can't just pass over it, let's no. face it. You were OK. I mean, um, when, when they asked you to do the part, you didn't think, what do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, everybody asked me that, and, I, and it never crossed my mind to think that. I mean, I, I've always loved Corrie, and they offered me a part on it. It was only afterwards that I really realised the full connotations of what they were asking yeah. me to do and what they were implying, but, um, but did no, you I was know really it... chuffed. Yeah. Did you know it was a transsexual before you turned up to the audition? No, not before I turned up to the audition. Oh, when right. I turned up to the audition, casting director sort of bungled me into the room and, and was all giggly. Yeah? <laughs> and said, whoa, <laughs> she's a transsexual. <laughs> <laughs> and I started yeah. giggling as well, and, um, and I got the part. That's all I did. Well, they giggle a lot, transsexuals, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would oh, if I was a transsexual. <laughs> <laughs> So, 
Now, have you, did you have to research it and all that? Yeah, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't speak to any transsexuals at first. I had to do all my research. I find it hard to as well. <laughs> <laughs> I just go... <laughs> Frank! Sorry. I'm sorry, I'll take, I'll take you it. You might be talking to them all the time and you just don't know it. I might be talking to one now, for all I know. Or for all you know, the press might just not have hold of it. Yeah. Yeah. No. They, they won't be able to get hold of it now. <laughs> this is going to be a sensitive interview I'm about sorry. the issues involved. OK. Oh. Did you? Of course you did. No, no. I, I, look, I, if there's any transsexuals watching. <laughs> of course there are. All my friends are. All your friends are transsexuals. Many of them now, yeah. You've taken this research thing completely too far. I've met a lot of really nice people from doing my research. I'm sure they're fabulous, but I might do it myself one day. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I sort of thing, you know, if I start drinking again, anything could happen. <laughs> I'll do it for you. It's a step further than having a tattoo, isn't it, when you're drunk? That's <laughs> <laughs> Is it reversible? <laughs> Don't think so. OK. <laughs> I don't mean like a cagoule. I mean. Cagoule? <laughs> 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 wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Yeah, I think I'll have a different colour today. <laughs> Gonna have a zip down the front. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I thought, the, I thought the mistake they made is it would have been nice to have known your character as a bloke for a bit and then had the change. Do you think? Do you not think so? No. I think it would be better that Roy met Hayley as a woman, pre-op, though she was, and, and fell in love with her. and So then the audience wanted them to be together and thought, yeah, this is a perfect couple. Yeah. And then when the clangor came that she was transgendered, he just got... The audience had go, well, it doesn't matter. They're meant to be together. Yeah. Which is what happened, of course. OK, exactly. But you were Harold previously, was the characters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, she was Harold. That was the name <laughs> of the bloke, wasn't it? And we've got a pic... This is not seen very often, but this is a picture of you as Harold. <laughs> I think you look, be you look better. <laughs> you look better now. You did the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, is it true that you go on holiday with uh, with Roy? Is it David's his real name? Yeah, right? yeah, we have been on holiday together. Yeah. yeah. You see, you see all these lunatics around the country who think that the people in Coronation Street are real. Yeah. If they're in Bournemouth <laughs> <laughs> and Ryan Haley's on the beach, that's going to finish them forever. <laughs> Well, there's always this, like, third party, which is David's real-life wife. Right. <laughs> was with us, so that would confuse him even more, I Yeah. Expect. Maybe they think she's our child. <laughs> <laughs> How old is she? She looks very young. Yeah? Mm. Oh, she's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> You'd like her, Frank. Would I? <laughs> yeah. I don't, you know, it's what's here that counts, I Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So that's won over a lot of my female viewers now. The ones who turned off when you were being nasty about transsexuals. I wasn't being nasty about transsexuals. I think transsexuals are great. <laughs> and uh, they can all come next week, we'll have a whole audience of them. Really? Yeah, why not? OK. It'll be like Kilroy. <laughs> <laughs> With less bollocks. <laughs> Do you know I once played you in a, in a sketch? Yes, I remember. Yeah. You had bollocks as earrings, as I recall. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you talk like this. Oh, God! Do you like me to hear this? I was really, really shocked. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, did you not like it? I thought it was quite... <laughs> no, you didn't like it. No, I didn't like it. <laughs> well, let's have another look at it for all time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I must say, Hayley, I, I don't like those earrings much. No, I know, Roy, but they've got great sentimental value. <laughs> Just like you. <laughs> <laughs> Your Roy was very good. Thanks very much. <laughs> so there's um, there's a live Coronation Street coming up. Yeah. You're worried about that? Is very... it going to be really live, live? Yeah, it's absolutely live, yeah. Yeah. Apparently not even 
a couple of seconds delay or anything. Yeah. We're all absolutely terrified. So if you forget your lines on that show, what's going to happen? Well, we all forget our lines all the time, so I can't imagine that that's not going to happen. And we've got a week's rehearsal, which is more than we normally get. But, um, but someone's bound to balls up. Yeah. <laughs> so it's worth tuning in. Yeah. <laughs> well, it will be interesting, because apparently you're going to... You're going to walk out on Roy? Are you allowed to talk about it? Well, it was in the paper. Exactly. I think you could do better. Do you think? <laughs> Who do you think I should end up with? Anthony, Dave. I think. Anthony! <laughs> I can imagine him saying, you know, Hayley, I really... <laughs> I'm going to go to the theatre. I mean, that'd be... <laughs> he does, he, I think he does fancy me in real life, right? Honestly. Does he? That blow? <laughs> yeah. He's always, <laughs> he's always <laughs> going to me in green room. He's always going, oh, Julie was so pretty in that wig. <laughs> in the wig? Yeah. You're so pretty in that wig, so pretty. He says it to me all the time. I mean, what he means is I hate your hair in real life, but... Yeah. <laughs> we'll get it. That'd be a fan... Now, that'd get you on the front page of the sun if you and Anthony got together. Well done, not it? Yeah? Yeah. Well, um, I hope the live show goes well. I hope you carry on in Coronation Street forever, because we love you. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Julie Hesmondell. <laughs> We'll be back in one minute. Knickknacks from Golden Wonder. They're tangy on your tonguey. The new Braun Synchro is our first shaver whose head moves from side to side, so it captures more hair and cuts closer. And to keep it feeling like a new shaver every day, here's how to clean it. This is Music of the Millennium. Two, the greatest artists. The best music with John Lennon, U2, The Rolling Stones, Bob Dylan, Aerosmith, Eric Clapton and Robbie Williams, plus Queen and David Bowie. Music of the Millennium 2, the album, out now. I'll have to go. I'll be right in. Charlie needs me. Good morning, Charlie. Mission accomplished. I think the client was blown away. <laughs> Nokia. Connecting people. A taste test with another leading stimulation drink, but three flavours against one. It just ain't fair, is it? I don't wanna ride. Cue the album, the essential guide to modern music with Robbie Williams, The Verve, and Coldplay. Top Loader and David Gray. Moby, Travis. Richard Ashcroft, today's biggest bands, Blur, Radiohead, and U2. Cue the music, cue the album. Babylon leap, rap a man I love. Come on, listen to this. Chickens can be so boring sometimes. Live on One Up with chicken tonight. Stir it up paste. Mmm, Caribbean pitters. Divine. You know your problem? You've got no rhythm. Stir it up. Millions of meals in moments. Loathing turns to indifference, which turns to familiarity, 
which turns to love. She'll come around. CK1, Calvin Klein. I didn't really know anything about him. The real story. He does wear the trousers, but people don't see that. Of Britain's most talked about man. We've made it work over the last three and a half years, and that's why we're so strong as a couple. With exclusive behind the scenes access, the David Beckham story, Wednesday at 8. Now then, I had an idea for a new television programme. It's called Before They Were Dead. <laughs> this is commissioner's desperate for a report on all the search warrants we obtained and the convictions they led to in the last 12 months ending December. Oh, leave it out. Come, there's ten bloody units on this one. Well, I do know that. We'll have to question all of them. Ladies and gentlemen, Richard Wilson. <laughs> Welcome to my world, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> it's very cosy. It is cosy. It's strange to have you on just after you've died. But it's it, strange. It's very kind of you, too. Well, it's, I, I want to make sure you've got other work. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what kind of response? Because people were laying reeds, weren't they? On, so I the hear. Spot. I didn't see any of that, but I'm told. Yeah. But also, there's a bit of a fracas because I was quoted as saying that uh, ITV had fixed Millionaire, of course. Yes. Which I had. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. a bit more trouble than I did. It was a sort of joshy remark, suddenly. So you don't actually believe it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, had, I've had missives from ITV assuring me, assuring me totally that there was no fix. Yeah. Well, that's good. I can't believe it myself. Can't you? <laughs> no. Um, let's watch a clip of, uh, of, of your death, if you don't mind us watching. It's oh. very moving. Fine. was watching it like that. No, you don't really believe it, do you, Richard? What, that he's dead? Oh, he's definitely dead. <laughs> Look at him. He's... He was that dead. actually your hand there, by the way? I thought it was rather effective. Yes. Uh, they didn't get an extra to lie I down on the wet pipe. The ring was... No, I was in the bloody gutter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very good at gutter work, I tell no. you. <laughs> Especially at two in the morning. And just across the road, there was a whole pub full of people sort of standing there, jeering. Yeah. <laughs> not easy to die in front of a pub full of jeering. I've done it thousands of times. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, yeah, you've got that experience, Frank. Yes, that's true. I could actually, I mean, uh, this is the first interview I've given since he died. Mm. Uh, you know, it was a hit and run. Mm. But I can actually now say that for the last seven years of Victor's life, he had a very bad cocaine habit. <laughs> which uh, David Renwick chose not to write about. Yeah. And Margaret, didn't, she didn't know either. But that's why the car sort of... You know, why would you walk out into the middle of the road when a car's coming? Yeah. He was doped up to the eyeballs. <laughs> to sort of ruin people's illusions, but I thought it should be talked about in the programme. Yeah. <laughs> a bit like transsexuality, you know. Yeah. Uh, but David Renwick and the BBC thought it advisable not to... Mm. ..to talk about it. Well, I'm shocked. <laughs> I'll go as far as to say, I don't... No, I won't. <laughs> That's something surely you won't miss, isn't it? I won't miss that. Do no. you think I'll get away from it? 
I mean, what do you do in the normal course of your life when something happens that you don't actually believe? <laughs> Because every now and again I say, I don't believe it, and yeah. I catch myself. Ah. And so... It's only when people applaud you realise you've done it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. I wonder if you try to edit it out of your normal speech now. I have, yeah, I have. But it was never meant to be a catchphrase. I mean, David Renwick, uh, a brilliant writer, when he found out it was becoming one, stopped writing it, really. Yeah? So he used to, um, you know, ration them. So a series of six, you make it one full one, or you might get two bits like, I do Yeah. <laughs> or I do be There's only about one in the whole series of... So of... you've tried to discourage it, basically? Yeah. So... <laughs> when you wrote this... <laughs> Very good. Okay. Still obtainable, I believe, in your local bookshop. <laughs> do you believe in deja vu, Richard? Déjà vu, probably. Hmm. I've, got a clip. <laughs> I've got a clip here of you talking to Torville and Dean. We're going to deflate you now because Richard Wilson has a complaint here. For anybody yeah, that didn't hear it earlier on, yes, this man yes, has a complaint to me. I have a me. bone to pick. You could have just chosen your moment a bit better in the Olympics because I was on ITV that night. <laughs> and under the hammer, I never watched. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a running theme. It's extraordinary. <laughs> My God, you do dig them up. Oh, I'll say so. Yeah. Well, look, you, only, you died two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> now, um... At the moment, you're, um, you're doing a bit of directing. I'm directing, yes, a new play at the Royal Court by Stephen Jeffers, yeah. It's called I Just Stopped By To See The Man. I'll just plug it briefly, if I may. I'll, I'll give you a good plug, cos we actually... We've got um, the poster. Oh, great. Um, it's not in the main... the main In the main uh, house at the Royal yeah, Court. This, this, there it is. Yeah. Stephen, directed by... This, this is another theatre, isn't there, at the Royal Court? The theatre upstairs. This is... Uh, yeah, we're downstairs. I don't know what's on there. We're downstairs. Oh, no. <laughs> About that. Now that's a, that's a bit of bad luck, isn't it? <laughs> it is. It's also very devious of you, Frank, to say you were going to give me a plug and then do something <laughs> stupid. But... <laughs> Sorry, absolutely <laughs> bloody disgusting. <laughs> I'm not doing the number at the end now. Oh come on! <laughs> I... <laughs> I was just going to. I was just going to say it doesn't. You have the cast now. I wanted to mention the cast, but you probably cut that out. But there's a brilliant cast: Sophie Okonado, Kira McMenamin, and Tommy Hollis. Brilliant, three brilliant actors. When wonderful, does it... a wonderful new play by Stephen Jeffries. When about, does it open? About the blues. Um, first preview this week. There you go. So go and see Richard's play. No, my play, Stephen Jeffries. Wow, well, that'll be. Cut. Go and see a play that Richard's involved with in some way. <laughs> Did see Millionaire upstairs the week after. Yeah, exactly. Been, you've forgotten that, didn't no, you? No, I've forgotten yeah, it. You Don't ever throw there. a joke you back at me like that when there. I'm not ready. <laughs> well, you could have had my eye out. <laughs> <laughs> but when, if you were in a play, when's the last time you did a, a, a play on the stage then? Oh, I think at the National Theatre, uh, what the butler saw. So when you walked out on stage, did you get that thing that, you know, when actors walk out and they get applause from the. Not at the National Theatre. No. no, no, that's frowned upon. You must have hated people, that. I, yes. <laughs> a few people shouted, I don't believe it. Did they? Yeah, no. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if people did. Well, someone like you, mate. <laughs> I do like saying it. I've been saying it all day to try and get Are it out of my really? system because I, when I saw you, I so wanted to say it. And I, when I say it, it's got big. Do you big, want to say it now? I'd, I'd like to say okay. it. Okay. Go but on. When I say it, I say it in a quite a big, exaggerated way. Mm -hmm. Right. It's all right with you. Yep. I do really. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what were you saying there? I was just saying I didn't actually. It sounded believe. like a, a pig being strangled. <laughs> And I've developed. I started off with a very I do, I do believe, and then I, I built up. That's better, the minimal approach. Oh, I like to give it some. <laughs> By the end of that, it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
Now, um, what happens to you after the play? What's next? Uh, I'm doing a series about Merchant Bankers, a comedy series called High Stakes, uh, with Jack Shepard, yeah. by Tony Sarchin. Well, I look forward to that, Richard. It's been lovely talking to you. Thank Ladies you. Ladies and gentlemen, the fantastic Richard Wilson. <laughs>